Hello and welcome to our Beam Tool tutorial video series. In this video, we want to talk briefly about uh, phaser inspection technique and type of beam sets which are supported in Beam Tool and the parameters that within each beam set help you define that beam set. With the current example of the flat piece with a single V, if you want to start with the phase array option under the probe, we when we click on the probe, we have a list of options for different UT techniques. And in this case, we can select phase array. When you select phase array, the first thing that you will see on screen is a default uh, probe and wedge is going to be shown on the piece. All the parameters about this probe and uh, wedge are included in this basically new tab on your left side. When you look at this, there are uh, there are options here for positioning, like for instance, you can move the probe back and forward. Uh, the probe can be moved up and down, which in this case, you want to put it zero to be close surface. It can get, it can be tilted or uh, it basically can be moved in different directions. And that's what can be useful when we work with custom pieces. When you click on this icon here, uh, it gives us all the details of the probe and wedge, which is already selected. And as default, the, these are the parameters of the uh, probe. For instance, here you can see its frequency, the total number of elements, pitch, width, and then all the dimensions of the wedge that is already loaded in terms of the uh, X, XT, uh, height of the first element, wedge angle, wedge velocity, and for any of these parameters, as long as you bring your mouse on, it will give you a definition of what that is and what they give you a description of that. Now, when we want to add a beam set, here you have the option, either you can go to these shortcuts or you, when you click on this, you get a list of all different beam sets that are supported with a phase rate so to start by them one by one, the first one would be a single beam set. Single beam, when you click on each of these beam sets, you're going to be prompt to a secondary dialog here that give you all the parameters that you will need to define that beam set. For instance, things like what is the start element that is being, what are the elements that are involved in creating that beam set? For instance, in this case, the start element is one. What is the aperture size? It's 16. What kind of, what's the angle? And also information with respect to gate length, gate start, gate end. And then here you will have a tab that gives you all the information with respect to the uh, weld that you, they said to the beam that you have. So for instance, here you can easily change the beam angle. And you notice that as you change the beam angle, the ray on the uh, background changes or we can define here what is the aperture size that we have or what is the starting element if there are larger the higher elements are um, generating these beam sets and also you can choose different uh, how many skips you want to have there are many other options here to use like in terms of like if you do want to don't want to specify this with respect to beam set we can define our beam with respect to distance from the element or we can define it with respect to time from the element and uh, time from the element then we can choose the we can choose like a, what type of beam mode we are using if in this case we are using shear if you use compression you realize that the beam that is generated now going to be a compression uh, compression wave uh, if you choose a compression wave for instance and then we have options in terms of gate and in terms of focus that we can show you in the examples upcoming uh, upcoming examples also when you go on a beam info uh, for the beam that you are on which is in this case a single beam set it gives you information that what was the refraction angle that you choose uh, for that uh, refraction angle that you choose what would have been the alpha angle or essentially the angle that was inside the piece and uh, when you have the weld like this, it gives you the uh, 
intersect the angle that it intersects the weld for instance in this case it would be a 30 degree that these are all the informations that we will show you how they can be used later for uh, different divining scan plans after you can turn on and off a beam by using this eye icon here and you can also choose the color for how you want this to be presented on the uh, on the piece the second option here would be a linear beam set linear beam set would be a series of beams that are all generated with the same angle so if we choose the angle change the angle all of these beams will have the same angle that are changed same similar to single beam now other than a start element and the aperture size you also have the option on the number of beams the in, as we increase this it basically repeats generating that beam with different apertures in the probe but then all the angles that are generated would be the same angle it all these beam sets will share the same features as we showed before uh, in terms of choosing the uh, wave mode cho choosing how we want to define the uh, propagation path uh, gates and focusing and these informations here next beam set that is uh, next beam set that is supported is a sectorial beam set in the sectorial beam set which can be it's probably one of the most common beam sets that are used in scan plan design we will have the same aperture creating the, the same aperture creating the uh, whole beams here when you click on this tab you have an option that you can actually show the elements which are used to create those beams in this case when we chose start element 1 and aperture 16 you will have the first 16 elements are are responsible for generating the beams and then you can choose what angles those beams you want to be again the point of the sectorial beam set will be that all these angles will be generated by the same aperture and as you change the numbers from the min and max you'll notice that you can have different angles generated obviously as before if you move the starting element to top or increase the number of elements in the aperture it will basically accordingly shift the position of these beams also since you define your minimum and maximum angles you can also either specify how many beams between the min and max angle you want or more simply uh, choose what kind of angular deviation you want so for instance here i can say one that means that now i have 51 beams between 30 and 80 or i can choose 0.5 five and that would be creating around 100 or 101 beams between uh, these angles now the next thing to show here now on the beam info tab all these information that was previously provided for a single beam is going to be available for all these beams what we can take advantage is this tool which this tool would be a highlight tool that tell you which beam these informations are for so for instance right now we are on our minimum beam which is 30 degree so you have all these informations for refraction of 30 degree all angle inside the piece and all other information and if you move these uh, basically uh, toggle this highlighted beam you can go to any of these beams and you will see that the information here will be updated for that specific beam the next thing you will notice is as uh, we will doing this you see that the bars here on the elements are changing these bars represent a focal law and the timing sequence on the elements that will be used in the instrument for uh, generating such beam. the other thing that you will notice is that you will have each as we move this each of these beams are correlated by a color if based on the technique the wedge that the probe and uh, frequency you have if you aim to create a beam that seems to be very difficult to be created by instrument in terms of steering capability in terms of the energy you will get a notice here so for instance in this case when i move to the any first my first elements 
sorry, my first angles, seems like when I am, you know, I go below 35 degree, I start to get this warning that these beams start to be very weak. This refraction angle, so beam tool gives me an alert to say, these beams do not have a good quality. So this would be a hint that maybe with this setup, this is not the best beam to use. And you kind of see that on the opposite end also, that when we move to very large angles, like something around past 77 degree, now, again, we will have low energy or low trans you know, transmitting energy, which is would be difficult to calibrate or would be hard to use. And that's a, what the beam tool can give you a, give you a, hint after this sectorial beam set the next beam set that is covered is a linear spread beam set or compound scan the difference that this beam set has compared to the previous one is that it's combination of what we saw from linear and sectorial and that's why we call it linear spread in this case uh, not only you can choose different angles, but you can also choose these angles to be created by different apertures. So for instance here, if I say the first element, uh, basically the first element in my probe is one, last is 64. Now if we define the aperture element, let's say we choose 16, and then choose a bunch of angles, let's say between 55 to 65 with one degree increment, that give us like, uh, like 10 beams, each of these 10 beams now gonna be generated by different part of the aperture. The first beam, the minimum beam, will the lower beam will be started by the first aperture, which is the first 16 elements. And then the last angle, which is 65, will be generated by the last 16 elements of your full aperture. And then the rest of the beams will get distributed between. The advantage that this will have is something that you will hint in the uh, in our future video tutorials that you will see that now you with the same only 10 beams you have a wide range of coverage because now in your real beams are not generated from a single aperture just for a second to just see how that different here you see in sectorial and i want to go back and choose the exact same angles maybe 55 65, one degree increment here, and let's give it another color. Here, you notice that those, when those same beams are generated in the sector with the same aperture, no matter where that aperture is, you have a very uh, basically smaller range of distribution of angles. And, but here, when you go to the same angles, but you allow them to be generated by different apertures, then you basically can have this spread in your beam exiting the piece. Next, other beam and beam sets that are here are for zonal, full matrix capture and reference uh, beam set. Uh, zonal is for AUT application, uh, and it needs a mostly a zonal uh, add-on module that it's gonna be beyond the scope of this uh, uh, training. And full cap matrix capture would have its own uh, section in these video tutorials. And reference beam set would be what we will use as we go in the next steps. So for this uh, video, I just want to leave you guys with the idea of how many options we have, the beam sets options we have uh, when we choose our uh, phase array pro. And uh, thank you for your attention and I uh, hope to hope you guys go to our next videos to see how these options are being used. Thank you.